SketchUp 2025 just dropped. And well, I'll explain. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the new features, show you how to get the most out of them, and give you my take from the perspective of a residential designer who uses SketchUp Pro and Layout for design and documentation. I'll highlight what's good, call out what's not, and show you one regression that might be a deal breaker for upgrading, even more than the hassle of migrating extensions, which, by the way, there is a new tool for. And if you're a serious SketchUp Pro, you need to join me at the SketchUp 3D Summit in Denver this June. There'll be at least a dozen expert presenters sharing their best tips, tricks, and workflows. Plus, live modeling sessions, workshops, and office hours for advanced questions. It's a one-of-a-kind event. Check out the link in the description, and I'll tell you more in just a minute. Now let's dive into what's new in SketchUp 2025. Leading with the strongest new feature, SketchUp 2025 debuts photoreal materials with advanced physically-based rendering maps. Building on the new rendering engine and ambient occlusion that we got in the last release, these textures further refine the SketchUp look with another dash of realism. Finding ready-to-use PBR materials has never been easier. Just click this new button in the Material Browser to launch the 3D Warehouse, where you'll find a wide selection of materials with all PBR maps already applied. Simply pick a material, download it, and it's instantly available as the active material on the Paint Bucket tool. Click on a surface to apply it, then fine tune its properties in the Material Browser. Under the Edit tab, you'll find some new settings to tweak. The normal map adds the illusion of depth without modifying geometry. The roughness map controls surface smoothness for glossy or matte finishes. The ambient occlusion map enhances realism with shadow effects in corners and crevices. The metalness map defines metallic versus non-metallic areas for realistic reflections. As soon as a PBR material is introduced to your model, the active style is modified to show photoreal textures. This is a new style setting under face settings, style, display photo real materials. Keep in mind, you will need to update the style by clicking on the style thumbnail to save this setting. That is gonna cause some confusion. When I click on this box to display photo real materials, I get a heads up dialogue about activating the photo real materials, which are already active, I thought. Either way, I don't wanna see that again. Now we have a sky, so agreeing to photo real materials automatically switches on the new environments in SketchUp 2025. This new feature is another property to save with your scenes. That is gonna cause some confusion. The new environments in SketchUp 2025 are there to shine the best light on the new PBR materials. There is a new environments browser in SketchUp 2025. You can choose a different environment on the select tab. Just click and see what you get. The stock environments are great if you want to position your design in an 80s slasher film summer camp, a nuclear blast zone, an abandoned mental hospital. Oh, and this one is really familiar to me. Frozen Ohio drainage ditch. I really can't think of a single use case for these environments. So my opinion, which is what this review is all about, the default environments should just be beautiful skies at dawn, dusk, and a few options in between. Stick to clear skies or maybe a few clouds. Hold on. Did somebody smudge my lens or are these default skies painfully pixelated? These defaults don't exactly showcase this new feature in the best light, so let's find our own. Just Google free HDR skies and Polyhaven should be at the top of the list with some great options. You know, some of these look familiar. It seems like environments don't look all that great unless they're at least 8K, which requires a 75 megabyte file. I can't help but wonder how that's gonna impact file size and performance. Hmm, click the plus sign to add your own environment. You can modify settings for the active environment on the Edit tab. When you check on the Set Sun location, shadows are automatically turned on in the Shadows dialog, but those settings are now locked out. That could cause some confusion. Choose whether to use the environment as a sky dome and for reflections. These sliders below are pretty straightforward. So how do the new PBR materials and environments finally interact when all the settings are aligned? Well, reflections on the exterior glass look pretty good, but unfortunately, interior reflections, like this bathroom mirror, are working off the same sky dome. Not the most flattering look for you interior designers out there. So just like styles, components, and materials, every time you click on an environment, the image is added to your model and will ride with it until purge. So there's another new setting. When I save, I'm prompted with a warning to purge the model. I find this annoying. I prefer to control when the model gets fully purged, so I'm gonna check don't show this again and say no. Just by exploring environments, this file blew up in size. To relieve this bloat, select no environment to return to a familiar clean workspace with no sky dome. Then click the flyout menu and choose purge unused. 
save again, and you can see that this file has deflated back to a reasonable size. Honestly, I don't see myself using environments all that much. They only look good with the ground plane on, which I really dislike, or when applied to a model with a fully detailed site with context and landscaping built in SketchUp, which isn't my workflow. When I want upgraded graphics, I export my barren SketchUp model to Lumion and add landscape and entourage elements there. On a positive note, I like the look. The improved visuals from PBR materials are beautiful, especially when combined with ambient occlusion. It definitely gives SketchUp an upgraded look, but it doesn't significantly impact my workflow or the look of my construction documents. I'd love to see a black and white render setting and styles that temporarily desaturates texture images. Even better, the ability to add vector hatches to SketchUp materials alongside roster texture images, then toggle materials or hatches and style settings. That would be killer. Here's a question. With these stylistic improvements, do you even need a rendering program? I think a lot of designers might appreciate this feature more than I do. Some of you might even be able to get by with SketchUp's new look alone. And hey, nothing wrong with that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let's talk about some new features that do impact my workflow. Here's a brick texture that uh, doesn't quite tile correctly. I hate fixing these in Photoshop, but in SketchUp 2025, there's a new button that can take care of this for you. Just click the little magic sparkle at the bottom right of the material thumbnail and let SketchUp's AI do its thing. That's a nice trick. The SketchUp 3D Summit is a premier in-person learning experience for professional architects, interior designers, and builders. If you use SketchUp Pro to design built environments, this event is for you. If you're wanting to take your business to the next level and to elevate your skills, it's, it's a no-brainer to come to this event. Distilled, condensed meeting of the best minds in SketchUp. The camaraderie we have with such a small group is absolutely wonderful. It's been an amazing event, one of the best I've ever been to. Attendees can dive into three distinct content tracks, design and documentation, workflow automation, and AI innovations. I'm relatively new to SketchUp, and I came here to up my game, and I'm coming away with a lot of new experience and new ideas. I'm, I came here to learn more about SketchUp workflow, and what I got out of it was so much more than that. You can sit down with presenters to address specific workflow challenges during office hours. These sessions provide unprecedented, personalized access to explore the solutions you need. And what I really liked about this was the access that you had to sort of just about everyone involved in it to be able to ask questions and deep dive into stuff. Uh, you have the benefit of being able to sit down with individual speakers and have one-on-ones, which is something you just can't have at a larger event. Reserve your spot early because the 2025 Summit is guaranteed to be another one-of-a-kind experience. In SketchUp 2025, there are new features to help manage tags across scenes. First, you can now control whether new tags appear in existing scenes. Simply uncheck show new tags, ensuring that newly added tags stay hidden in existing scenes. In my opinion, that should have been the default all along. Another new trick is the ability to manage the visibility of multiple tags across multiple scenes in a single operation. This is different than updating the tags saved to a scene. This new function only changes the visibility of selected tags within selected scenes. It's a powerful tool, but to really make use of it, you need to understand the intricate dance between tags and scenes. My Conduct Tools extension already manages all my tags and scenes, and it even allows multiple tags to be assigned to a single entity, eliminating the cluster of nested groups. So while this new feature solves a problem, it's not one I deal with anymore. You might find it useful, or you might wanna try Conduct Tools. Here's a special offer. Use coupon code SKETCHUP2025 at conducttools.com to get $50 off an annual subscription. Now, I know what you're thinking. Another year, another release. Do I really want to upgrade and deal with migrating all my extensions? I'll bet some of you are still rocking SketchUp 2021. Well, good news for all you laggards. SketchUp 2025 comes with a new extension that actually transfers your extensions from previous versions. I gave it a shot and it worked, mostly. All the RB and RBS files and folders made it over, but the licensing didn't. I still had to deactivate some extensions in older versions, sign in again, look up some license keys, and deal with a few errors. But hey, it sure beats hunting down RBZ files from a dozen different websites and reinstalling everything manually. Here's a quick one. The Rotate tool now has grips added to bounding boxes for easier alignment. So now you can snap to the side center of group before rotating. It's something. Slightly more notable, there's been some refinement to the two-point arc tool. After filleting a corner, the tool now prompts other corners with a magenta inference to match the previous arc. Just double click when you see the inference. Furthermore, 
you can unround the corners when you see the magenta inference on the outside of an arc. Again, just double click, not bad. Text in SketchUp now dynamically updates length, area, and coordinate values based on geometry changes. This is a very small improvement, but it's pretty slick. I could see this coming into play during the early stages of design, when you're hung up on square footage calcs. I like it. Now let's have a look at Trimble's secondary software. The back burner, the perpetually passed over, and too often overlooked. 2D drafting counterpart of SketchUp that you might not even realize is already on your desktop. Here's what's new in Layout 2025. The Move, Rotate, and Scale tools now have their own separate toolbar icons. Sounds insignificant, but untangling them from the select tool allows for more precision with less clicks. It's now much easier to scale a drawing. Watch this. I'll import a scale drawing like a floor plan. Right click on it and choose make group. Right click again and set the scale. I'll choose quarter inch equals a foot. Double click into the scale drawing, then activate the new scale tool from the main toolbar. I believe the default keyboard shortcut is S. Click on the corner of a wall with a known dimension to set the first scale point. Click again at the end of the wall to set the second scale point. I'll move my cursor along the axis, let go of the mouse, and type the precise dimension. Then hit enter to lock it in. The rotate tool has a similar feel. Activate the rotate tool and hover on an entity to select. Click to set the center of rotation. Click again to set the start point of the rotation. Move your cursor and easily type a precise angle or snap to an edge. These new tools do improve the drawing experience and layout. Thumbs up on that. We finally got Zoom Window in Layout 2025. It's the little things. There's nothing bigger. Despite not loving the split and join paradigm in layout, largely because it's not taken seriously by the trim and fillet types, I do like this new functionality. We can now select a series of edges and split them all at once with just one click, or join a selection back together again with one click. This is a clear improvement for anyone who drafts in layout. And if you're not drafting with scale drawings in layout, you should be. Check out the video I linked in the top comment when we're done here. Moving on. There's a new environment section within the SketchUp model inspector. I've already said my piece about environment. Now I'll say my piece about overriding properties saved with a scene using the SketchUp model inspector and layout. I don't like it one bit. It's redundant and causes confusion. Looking for a better excuse to skip this upgrade than they killed Style Builder? Well, unfortunately, SketchUp 2025 introduces a major disruption to its feel. Double clicking in and out of groups and components now requires a pause. I can't just drill in. For someone like me who rapidly clicks between groups, that delay feels like an eternity. I'm sure it'll be patched in the first maintenance release. I've got one more thing to say, and I don't have any hard data to back it up. It's just something I know to be true. The majority of building and renovation projects are fairly straightforward. Most of us are working within the realm of right angles and readily available materials. Despite what we're taught in architecture school, we aren't all designing Gary knockoff museums and monuments. Every single bank branch, barn dominium, basement build out, car wash, coffee shop, craft brewery, strip mall, self storage center, kitchen upgrade, closet conversion, cabinet install, retail refresh, restaurant remodel, porch enclosure, patio, and pop top addition is drastically overcomplicated by BIM and poorly represented by 2D CAD. Designing in SketchUp and documenting in layout is the sweet spot for an impressive array of projects. I just wish Trimble Suits would wake up and realize that layout is already a powerful drafting solution that works for so many of us. With just a little more love, it could dominate the CAD market. What a massive missed opportunity. For all their business savvy in acquiring SketchUp, the execs at Trimble are leaving serious money on the table by ignoring layout's potential. Now, what the hell do I know? I'm just a SketchUp nerd with a wired three button scroll wheel mouse and too many opinions. Let me know what you think in the comments. Click this link to join me at the 2025 SketchUp 3D Summit. Tickets are on sale now and moving fast. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Oh, and pour one out for Style Builder. It's been canned.